Juego amigos, encontramos a Big Chief Studios LTD de El Reino Unido y aquí está Mark para platicarnos sobre lo que está produciendo Big Chief Studios. Hello. Hi. How will, uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. For, for this, now you're producing this real kick-ass uh, uh, figures about one uh, about the, the most important properties that the UK has gave to the world. James Bond, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a license we've been working on for over two years. Um, it, it's uh, Eon Productions Limited who make, who make the show. Uh, they've been a very, very good, uh, a very good company to work with, uh, but they're very protective, understandably, over their brand. And, uh, the, you know, Bond is very much kind of seen as a, as a luxury kind of brand in, in terms of the consumer products. So it's taken a long time to um, to sort of get the deal to where we needed it to be and where they were kind of happy. They very much wanted it to be a, a retro line starting out and going forward. We are licensed for all the characters because we, we get asked this question a lot. Um, there'll be certain characters that um, we might have to do additional likeness rights stuff for, but on the whole, we've got everything. So we will be working our way through the bonds. Um, the first ones we wanted to start out with were Goldfinger, um, because obviously that was kind of the first movie that really struck a chord with fans and where they kind of found their template for what the movies would become. Um, yeah, I mean, if you ask people, Bond is Goldfinger yeah. and Bond is Sean Connery. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, but but again, kind of like with Doctor Who, it's, it's a generational thing, so everyone's got their own Bond, and so that's lovely. It's really nice to have that. But we were very. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, very concerned that we wanted to, to make the best figures that we could possibly make and that we, we needed to up our game in terms of quality, in terms of paint work, in terms of uh, tailoring on the costumes, uh, packaging, the accessories, the light up bases, I, I everything. I love the details and I can see uh, a lot of hand work in odd job here. Yeah. yeah, well one of the things that was very uh, key to these guys as well, because they've got a new body um, as well uh, that we've been developing and obviously these two guys have fat suits on to give them the bulk and and that, that was key to it as well because if you just make the body and it's just a, a fatter body the problem is you can't move it yeah. so um, it needed to still be able to have that posability and articulation but and then with the, the fat suit on top and getting him right because you know he stands like a big wrestler guy you know and he, he's very bulky um, and even even the golfinger because everyone assumes he's just a big fat guy um, but he's actually quite an unusual shape. He's got sort of a big pot belly, but his arms and his legs are quite thin. So it was trying to get the back. The first fat suit we had, he was like this. He was just, he was too big. So we had to really work on the fat suit and get that right as well. And then of course, you have to tailor the clothing to the fat suit. So when we adjusted the first fat suit and then we had the costume, it was too big. So we had to go back and retailer that. Um, and there's a lot of be a lot of work's been put into the costumes and getting them just right. And um, and there's still going to be a few little tweaks, tiny little things made here and there to improve the shirts and things and the collars and stuff. But there's on the whole, it's um, you know it's it's been really really well received and hopefully fans will see the work that's gone into it because there's a ton of stuff that we've done. I mean even down to like the little accessories, these little tracker that you can actually it's a little gold tracker there. You can actually pull the sole up on the shoe fit the tracker into his shoe, close it back down again, uh, just like he did in the film. Um, the, the actual big silver homing device, you can actually slide the, the, the piece just like you can on the, the full-size replica the guys have here. Bueno, esas figuras están más o menos eh, a la venta por 250 dólares cada una, pero bueno, el detalle lo vale, ¿no? Nos van a mostrar la caja en estos momentos. So, Que la caja también trae un gran detalle, vea nomás. This will be printed on a, on a thicker board, but you have the pictures on the one side of the figure, and then on the other side you have your backdrop, because that's been very popular with our fans, uh, you know, who have, have bought the Doctor Who and the Sherlock figures as well. So it works quite well, so you'll still have the ability to display your figure on your shelf or your glass cabinets, what have you. They'll be coming in tuxedos as well. So the first the tuxedo version of Sean Connery will, will actually be from Doctor No. So, so that, and it'll be the first, you know, Bond, James Bond moment. That's what we want at the casino. So they're, they're all going to happen over time. It just, it's like anything, it's, 
and we have to go through an approval process we have to get everything approved and signed off then we start working on it and you know it's as I say it's kind of a collaborative thing and you, you as much as we go oh yeah we'd love to see that you know we'd love to do this and if it, it, um, you have to do the same if you have to do with with every uh, every actor who has played Bond so which one would you, you yeah which one would you do that's why I was asking this well I, I think I think if, I, if you if you're trusting me on it then yeah I'd, I'd go with you spy you love me for Bond, I thought that was uh, for um, sorry Roger Moore, which I thought was terrific. Um, uh, Blazing only has one. Blazing only has one. Pierce definitely Golden Eye, um, and um, Craig. I would have to go with Skyfall. The Skyfall as well. Uh, I yeah, love Skyfall. Yeah, yeah. Although to see him in that uh, that Madagascar gear, the Hawaiian shirt, and chasing after Malacca, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a dream come true to see that figure. That uh, you are making figures about one of the most. Uh, important uh, British television series that also came to all, all, pretty much all the world and we love and in Mexico we are such a great fans of Thunderbirds mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean we are too I mean the the, the 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 whole thing with Thunderbirds is obviously a lot of people grew up with it um, and with the new series as well Thunderbirds I'll go it's only sort of making it um, and you know modernizing it for a new uh, new uh, new set of fans which is fantastic but we have a, a, a great love and fondness for it because of the, the, the model work and the, the puppets and the characters obviously the stories are great uh, these uh, figures have, have never really been done like this uh, to this extent I think a lot of people when we announce them are like well how are you gonna do that they're, they're, they're not really people so but um, we've been very lucky we're working with a great consultant a guy called Chris King who's very well regarded in the Thunderbirds and Jerry Anderson community. And uh, we've actually got access to either original heads or molds and casts from those original heads, which has meant that we've been able to do 3D scans. Those 3D scans are then manipulated, cleaned up where necessary, um, but they're gonna have um, moving eyes, just like the original puppet. So you'll be able to take the hair pieces off. We'll have two hair pieces, one to have the hat, one plain. You can move the eyes and position them how you want. Um, they've got the bendy hands, so just like the original puppets had wire in the fingers, you'll be able to manipulate them and pose them around holding the weapons or accessories. Um, the costumes here on these ones are a little bit work in progress still as I explained earlier. So a little bit of work left to do on that, but um, in terms of getting the colour right and the, and the, the, the sort of fit needs to be a little bit baggier and what have you. <clears throat> but on the whole, they're, they're, they're not a million miles away. We're going to be doing all the Tracy brothers, John and Alan, and we already have plans uh, that we're going to be doing Brains, Parker, Penelope and the Hood. And yes, the Hood will have light up eyes. So he will, he will be able to do his evil things. So You were telling me this other uh, shelf, it is the first property that you had. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we had the Doctor Who, we've been a licensed partner with BBC Worldwide since 2011. Uh, we've continued with it and we intend to continue with it. And yes, in answer to the question that we get all the time, we will be doing all 12 or 13. It just takes time to get through them all. Um, Pretty much will be 14, Doctor. It will, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, precisely. That's the thing. Funnily enough, we asked how they were going to manage that and they didn't know yet. So <laughs> it's going to be funny, that one. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the figures down the bottom here are sort of in stock items. Um, the Tenth Doctor actually sold out recently, just literally recently. So, uh, but we, we might be uh, having some more stock of him coming back in. Uh, we got the current pre-orders: the uh, Clara Oswald, uh, Jenna Coleman figure, the uh, Rose Tyler, Billy Piper. And slow down a little bit because of the show not being on and other other factors. But the Doctor Who's kind of perennial; it's always been there. So it's always been there and uh, we, we fully support it and we want to uh, continue with it and, and we want to get on to Daleks and Cybermen and all of the cool things as well so everyone seems to want the Doctors first so so oh. we have to balance it out. <laughs> you, you, you may have the, but the Daleks you have to have it first as well. Yeah I know that's the thing. Um, the question is on the Daleks is which one to do and it's an interesting one because the, the classic Daleks didn't really do a lot. And you didn't get you only got to see sort of the, the you know the creature inside them, I think in a couple of episodes. But the the big problem, you know, is that the the, the Russell T Davies era Dalek, as it's become known, is more interesting in its look and appearance and in terms of what it does, uh, especially when it opens up and you see the the alien inside and the you know and all the pipes and lights and all that stuff, and that's more interesting. Um, but obviously, we got a huge amount of fans love the classic, huge so. 
it, we're a bit torn on which one to do. And now so you what? have the other property of BBC, which is a huge success yeah. in television. Well, I, I mean, Sherlock was a phenomenon. We were, we were, I think, the only second licensee to come on board because uh, the first one was Clue, the, the game Clue. Um, and uh, we, at the time when we contacted the BBC, although it's a BBC property, our license is actually with Hartswood Films, uh, direct the makers of the show, because uh, BBC at the time didn't have a licensing programme, so we ended up going direct to the makers. Um, but yeah, so we, we've got the, the Abominable Bride figures here from the, the Christmas special, the Victorian era episode, and, um, and we have obviously uh, Moriarty that's currently in stock, and Mycroft will be going up for pre-order very, very soon, so the Mark Gatiss figure. Uh, you, you told me that they were um, actually involved with the production of the of the figure, the actors. But have you had any feedback on the actors when, when with with the figure already uh, finished? Well, when we met David Tennant, um, he was at a, a convention at a hotel, and we took him the prototype of the Tenth Doctor, and he actually was very very complimentary. He said, "He says, wow, he says this is genuinely very very good." He says, "You know, you see these things." and they very often don't end up looking like you. He says, but this is really good. So we were really pleased about that. John Barrowman was also very complimentary. We met him. We walked in and we had the box and he went, Big Chief, he says, I know you guys, I love your work. So that was lovely, that was really nice. Um, Benedict actually signed a, a picture for us to saying, um, you know, uh, yes, thanks guys, you know, congratulations, my first figure. Because it was the first Benedict Cumberbatch figure that had been out there. So Matt Smith was brilliant. Matt and Karen, Karen Gillan, um, Guardians of the Galaxy now obviously as well, it, it was, were fantastic. We got to go on set one day and they both came in in full costume. They had their figures each and they were playing with these figures, so it was really nice. Um, so yeah, we, we, you know, it's very lucky when you get to meet these people. Um, and, that, and when they do, I, I think they kind of think it's a little bit weird. We know Jenna Coleman's mom wants her figure and, and Matt Smith's mom wanted his figure, so we had to send one to her. Um, but he himself, he kind of said, it's a bit weird having a figure of myself in that. <laughs> so I don't think he wanted it, but his mum's got it. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, but as long as someone has it, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Well, uh, Mark, it's a great toys line you have here. Uh, great development and also great talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. I know I can talk. No, no, it's all right. It, was, it has been fun. So, uh, bueno, pues ya lo vieron. Esto es lo que Big Chief Studios nos tiene preparado eh, para cosas que ya están y que van a estar después disponibles en, en, en el mercado. So, once again, Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Y nosotros seguimos en juegos, juguetes y coleccionables.